Hi, welcome. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, this is a this is a very informal uh, public input session. So um, please, if you have uh, any questions, um, the the one thing we will ask is that uh, if you could come and ask your questions at the uh, the center microphone. And the reason for that is that we're uh, telemedia is recording this uh, public input session um, to rebroadcast on telemedia and then post online. So speaking to the microphone to make sure that your your voices are heard and recorded uh, for the uh, the telecast. Um, also, when you come to ask a question, if you wouldn't mind identifying yourself by name and also the, the street address, just one of those uh, those town things that we have to do, but uh, these are public meetings. So uh, welcome, thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, as you can see, there's uh, lots of pizza here, so please enjoy yourself and sweets as well. Thank you, Daniel, for uh, providing that. Um, we also have, um, a couple of tables set up with the actual presentations. Um, so feel free to thumb through those. We also have some of the uh, presentations in the back as well. Um, also in the back, we have a display for our um, Buy a Brick campaign for the Friendship Park. And that, um, that campaign is going to help fund um, a new pathway into the playground from the upper parking lot. So uh, we were selling two sizes of bricks there, a 4 by 8 and an 8 by 8 and I encourage you to, uh, to uh, check that out. Um, you can order those through our online web store, which the address is on the flyers on the tables, um, or you can uh, take a printed form and fill it out yourself and mail a check. Um, if you have any questions on that, if you would uh, let us know, is, is we, can, we can help. Danielle is actually their coordinator for that, so she can help you with that. We also in the back have a number of uh, sign-in sheets if you want to receive um, information as we move forward updates. Um, if you would sign into the uh, sign-in form, um, that'll also double as a uh, volunteer form in the future. We're going to have the community build um, part of this process that we're going to talk about later. So if you sign in on that, that sheet, you'll receive the email updates that we send out about that community build and other volunteer activities that we're going to be doing for the, uh, for the playground. And then finally, there's also a membership form in the back for the Friends of Roberts Field. Uh, the Friends of Roberts Field is going to be the fundraising arm of this project, and then the other projects that happen um, for the implementation of the master plan. So I encourage you to, uh, to join the, uh, the Friends of Roberts Field group. Uh, we do a lot of volunteer work. We're obviously doing some fundraising too, but um, it's, a, it's a good community organization, and we're really dedicated to uh, enhancing and improving Roberts Field. So once again, those application forms are in the back. With that said, tonight's presentation is going to be uh, about the, uh, the new Friendship Park design. And um, Megan O'Brien, the uh, president of O'Brien & Sons, uh, which is a landscape structures uh, representative for New England, is going to be making the presentation along with uh, Steve Janley, Janley, excuse me, um, who will be talking about um, the role that the Chelmsford DPW is going to have in this uh, process. They're, they'll be building it. Um, we'll touch a little bit on um, the fundraising and volunteer activities that will be taking place. And then um, we'd like at that, after that, at that point, if you have any questions, to please come up to the microphone and uh, let us know those questions and we'll do our best to answer them. So with that being said, um, I'll turn it over to, uh, to Megan to give you the presentation about how the uh, Friendship Park uh, playground design has uh, shaped up. Thank you, Phil. Um, so I'm Megan O'Brien, I'm the president of O'Brien and Sons, and we have been contracted with the city to, or the town, to um, go ahead and provide the design that you're all seeing out there. I hope everyone's got a copy. There's some large copies, and then there's some smaller 11 by 17 copies. Um, we've worked pretty hard uh, with the committee and with other um, public input meetings on this design and coming to where we think it should be, hopefully, and we're, of course, welcoming your feedback tonight. Um, some of the features, I thought it would be interesting to just show you some of the features um, that are included in the design. And so if I can direct your attention to the screen, um, we have, I have a pointer, we have a, um, an area that is rope and climber that's similar to this one shown here where I have the, um, the laser. Um, we also have a 12 foot high slide. Uh, it's a deck that has a six foot deck underneath 
So there's a couple of slides that look like this coming off, uh, as well as a lot of other climbers and, um, and slides. But these are two really great features that are shown with these two that I've already talked about are two great features that are on the five to 12 year old um, play structure. We also have this Omni Spinner, which is um, a really great piece for all kids, two to 12 years old. It has some um, um, opportunities for children of all ages that have um, the ability or, or may need full postulation support from the top of their head all the way down. So there's some seats like that and there's some good social interactive interaction um, features on this, as well as some good proprioceptive and vestibular feedback um, benefits on these. Um, we also have a sway fund that's part of the 5 to 12 structure. So the sway fund is a component that allows up to two wheelchairs. So if you were in a wheelchair um, and you could not transfer out, it's a great opportunity to actually be on a moving piece um, whether you're an adult or a child, that allows for um, inclusion of people sitting in the seats that you see here. There's another one over here, and there's two opportunities for a wheelchair, and it sways back and forth. So that's a really great piece. It's accessible by a, um, a couple of wheelchair ramps that are on the 5 to 12 structure. Um, a couple other features that we have on this design is a roller slide. Um, a roller slide is a really high tactile um, piece that allows for um, a, not only deep pressure, um, which is really important for a lot of kids that are lacking sensory input, but also it allows for somebody who may have cochlear implants and um, what happens to them when they go down a plastic slide is that they may receive a static shock, which is typical with a plastic slide. And um, when it happens to somebody who has a cochlear implant, it actually sets off their um, hearing device so that they would have to go back to their auditory provider and have them reset the, the implant. So it's a nice feature for somebody who maybe can't go down a um, a plastic slide. It's also a nice alternative, like I said, for some tactile feedback, and um, it's a great alternative to a stainless steel slide, which would have those same benefits to somebody with cochlear implants, but you don't have the heat that you would have with a stainless steel slide. Um, we also have something called a zip cruise. There's three different lengths on um, our zip cruise, and the one that's implemented into this design is the lo longest of the three um, lengths that we have. This one is 66 feet long, and it's um, a double, we call it a double bay. So there's two tracks, like what you see here, that are 66 feet long, and they go parallel to each other. One has a pendulum seat, like you see this girl who doesn't need postulation support, and then there's another um, track that has this kind of seat, which allows for somebody who does need postulation support, and um, it also has a harness that clicks in, so it's a nice, safe ride as well that keeps you in the seat. So that's going to be a really fun piece, and it's really inclusive because it allows two children, of course, like the sway fun I was talking about before, it allows all children to play together, no matter what their abilities. Um, for the in the two to five area, um, so we have on this design an area that's dedicated for five to 12, children ages five to 12, an area that's dedicated for children two to five, and then we have some pieces that are for everyone. Um, this would be included in that two to five age group. So it, there's a couple structures in that design, and um, this is one of them, and it just allows for some great pretend play as well as some social opportunities and um, it's just a neat little cute house um, so there's some theme play in there as well. Um, a few more features on this playground. There is um, a lot of nature theme to this playground overall. Here's one example. It is a balance beam in the two to five year old area 
um, that looks like a log, but it's actually glass fiber reinforced concrete. Um, one of the best benefits for children two to five is practicing balance. Um, and so a balance beam is a really good opportunity for them to, uh, and a great play experience. Um, we also have this double bobble rider. This, um, this is all for children, all children, two to 12, but this one is put in the two to five area and it's a great opportunity for social interaction, for eye contact. Um, you can do it by yourself. You don't need another rider, um, but it's just a, a cute rocking piece. And having a lot of different play experiences, like so far we've talked about swaying, sliding, uh, climbing, um, you know, rocking, balancing, having all of those different play experiences on a playground is really important and it was really important to this um, advisory group to implement as many different play experiences as possible. Um, we also have something called a hillscape climber. This is a double hillscape climber. It is four feet tall at the top and it, um, as you can see, it's the climbing, it's crawling, it's traversing from one to the other. So you have, you know, you've got to get from one side to the other. Um, you can see that these kids possibly may be socializing and at the top, kids like to climb up and sort of chit chat and hang out. So that allows for some social interaction as well. Um, this, is, this climber here is called the Swiggle Knots Climber. It's just a very challenging climber. It actually is parallel with one of the wheelchair accessible ramps on the design. So it's a nice opportunity that if you've gone up and down the ramp and you're able to, you can possibly go, go parallel with the ramp and maybe parallel with your friend who may uh, only be able to get up the structure by the ramp and uh, you can sort of go along with them. And again, it's an, another great um, opportunity for inclusive play. Um, this is a spinner. So I showed you before something called an omni spinner, which is a sit down spinner, but stand up spinners are great. So as adults, a lot of us think spinning, ugh. well, when you're little, <laughs> Spinning is awesome and it provides great, again, vestibular and proprioceptive benefits. Um, it gives you a sense of um, your sort of your, your, your body in space and that's really important feedback for your brain uh, as it's learning. Um, this one, you can do it by yourself. You can do it with other kids. Um, you'll see that there's three on this one. It's also set at an angle so that it works by centrifugal force. So nobody has to push you. You don't have to kick off the ground. You could just get on the piece and by using your body and its movements, you can make the piece rotate clockwise, counterclockwise, slow, fast, however you want. But that's really important for some kids is to have the opportunity to spin on their own and control their own body movements and maybe not have somebody touching them. Um, there is a sensitivity for some kids with touching. Um, and then just going along with that more nature theme like I was talking about with this log balance beam and this hillscape climber is um, this is one of the roofs on the two to five structure. So, um, there's catalogs in the back on the table when you walked in, and there was also a list of all the components that are included on the design, and I put it so that it's in order of the pages, so you're not flipping back and forth, it sort of goes in the same order as the pages. Um, so if you really wanted to get a great in-depth look at every component, you can do that with this component list and with the catalog. Um, and uh, it's, there's a lot going on, so it would have been a pretty lengthy discussion if I had showed you every single piece, but um, I can say that the committee definitely has seen and evaluated every piece, and um, it's a pretty great design, to be honest. Um, so if you wanna keep going forward. So here is the design um, as it stands today. This is the existing paver walkway. Um, there's possibly two entrances down here um, to come in because I guess the, 
the parking lot location. I'll let Steve talk a little bit more about that um, from the DPW's aspect. But this is the five to 12 structure that I was talking about that had that rope climber and it had that six and 12 foot uh, tower structure and it has the sway fund and the ramping here um, and the roller slide here. Here is that 66 foot long zip cruise that I was talking about. Um, like I said, one is for um, uh, somebody who might need postulation support and one is for somebody who doesn't need postulation support. The hillscape climber is here. Um, we have something called a friendship swing that is located up here. It's for um, two children to use and they're sort of facing each other. It's actually, it could be children, it could be um, older child, younger child, it could be a mom or a dad in their child or a grandparent in their child. It um, gives great opportunity for not just swinging but socialization as you're swinging and also um, making eye contact, which is really important for children to learn about eye contact. Um, so that's a great piece there. There's also a, an eight place swing set for children of all ages. So there's baby seats, there's belt seats, and there's flat molded seats, and there are, um, again, full postulation support um, molded bucket seats with the harness that you saw that were similar to the zip cruise. It's basically the same seat, but on a swing. Um, we have a sand, um, possible phase two sandbox area here. We have a pavilion here with picnic tables. The picnic tables do allow for um, spaces for wheelchairs as well to come right in and, um, and enjoy the space without feeling like they can't access the table, they can pull right in. Um, obviously there's benches as well around the site. Um, this over here is the two to five area um, with a couple of structures and some, the double bobble rider and the omni spin spinner. Um, pathways are incorporated. Um, distances from the trees are incorporated. There's sections of cord in place, rubber, which is a unitary surfacing that um, it just allows for anybody with a mobility device, like a wheelchair or a walker, to really make a smooth transition onto the structure. Um, that's what's shown here in blue. Um, what's shown in this sort of this brownish gray or brownish um, orange is a uh, is wood engineered wood fiber surfacing, which is what you see on a lot of playgrounds. Um, Yeah, um, just to touch on the walkway, the brick, the existing brick walkway that's there is going to remain. Um, there's still some decisions from the DPW aspect as well as the committee aspect we're going to work together on how we want to get there from the upper parking lot uh, to the playground. If, it, if the new walkway connects over to the existing bricks or if we potentially come into one of those maybe side entrances, we got to kind of work that still um, on what would be the most advantageous route uh, to get you into the space. Um, as far as DPW involvement with the construction of this playground, we will be providing all the site preparation. Uh, probably at some point in April we'll start prepping the site uh, and then we'll be basically tasked with working with uh, Megan's contractors uh, for doing a lot of the initial assembly and then, you know, we'll lend some support to Community Build Day, which I'm sure will come up in a little bit. Uh, and then we'll be tasked with construct, uh, constructing or contracting the interior walkways, uh, as I just spoke of, the walkway from the upper parking lot into the new playground. And then there's some, you know, outside stuff. The permit of fencing for the playground. There's some landscape screening for a couple of the abutters that needs to be done. Uh, I don't know if there's a time on one of those slides. Right. Uh, I'll speak to the timeline a little bit. I guess that's one of the slides, but I can, I'll can. i speak to that in a little bit when that slide comes up. So this is the 3D rendering. Um, as I said,
said before, it's part of the packet that you have out there, um, the 11 by 17 pieces of paper. Um, this is sort of the overall view. Um, and it definitely has um, colors that meet more of the nature theme aspect, like acorn and tan and brown and leaf green. Um, but it's just a, obviously yeah, that's the view of what you were seeing with the site plan. So uh, as you guys know, this is, there's been a lot of public input into this process. And one of, some of the things that we heard pretty loud and clear was that um, people wanted a more open. They wanted more um, uh, better uh, what do you call it, uh, sight lines. Yeah, better visibility. So um, I think one of the things that this plan does really, really well is that it opened up the park. So you can really see from one side to the other now. And um, another really neat component of this is that um, it, uh, it, it, puts, um, it puts the shady structure, the shade structure area in the center of the park um, and really would allow for uh, you know, a family or to, to gather there and to sort of, if you had someone in the two to five area and had someone in the five to 12 area, you could still see both comfortably. So that was, that, that I think really, this design really accomplished that goal of uh, good visibility. And then I think we all agree that the, uh, um, the, it sort of creates sort of a park in a park design. Um, and it really sort of uh, echoes what the rest of the, the master plan is in, in that we've got the, the walkways out um, in the center of the park now and then also the, uh, the nature trails and stuff. So it really, it really is very consistent with, with the other uh, design features that are happening in the master plan. Did you get anything you wanted to add? So, um, you know, just to give you another perspective, that's the 66 foot long zip cruise, there's the hillscape, there's the friendship swing, the regular swing. That's the five to 12 structure. You can see a lot of it, but that's the um, 12 foot deck. There's a six foot deck underneath, all sorts of slides and climbers coming off of there. Um, you can go to the next one. We'll see if we can see even more. Here's the structure, the five to 12 structure again. Here's the wheelchair um, ramps. Here's the sway fun that I was talking about where two wheelchairs can get on as well as lots of other folks and um, they could all be together and swaying back and forth. Um, another nice thing about, well, obviously the best part about this piece is that uh, a lot of times if you're in a wheelchair, you have to get out of the wheelchair to enjoy the component, the play experience. And this allows you to not have to get out of your wheelchair and you can still experience a great um, play component, which is swinging. So movement is awesome, right? And so you're able to really get on there. It's very inclusive by allowing all sorts of people, no matter what, to get on and, and play together. Um, and there's that Netflix that I was talking about before. And what's great about the Netflix and what adds another component um, is it has a lot of free, um, a lot of climbing that allows for, um, it's not an obvious type of climber. And so you have a lot of ability for motor planning, meaning here I go, I'm gonna climb, oh, nope, I can't do that. So I've got to, my brain has to work and sort of understand, okay, this is how I have to do it. And that's really good for kids because a lot of times they have um, structured play, and um, these, while these type of designs are great, they are very obvious. You climb up these slides, or you climb up the stairs, you slide down the slide. This type of piece, it's not as obvious, and there's so many different ways to um, climb up it or down, and nobody really, it's not as obvious. So it's really a great piece for, 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 for all kids, and it really helps to build their motor planning. Um, here's an overall view of that two to five year old area. So we saw this piece before, which was that themed playhouse, um, which is really great for that two year old, three year old age range where everything's a little smaller in scale. Everything's a little bit more tactile. Um, a lot of nice neat crawling spaces. 
Um, and then you have that double bobble rider that I was speaking about before, that omni spinner, and then this structure that's got a double slide and it's got a wiggle ladder here and a lot of balancing. Um, like I said before, balancing is really great for the two to five age range. Um, that's a very big challenge for them um, as they're making their way, not just from walking, but um, traversing from step to step through the air without necessarily having something um, under their feet the whole time. So that's really good. It helps to build their balance and traversing from one piece to the next and changing elevation. So um, there's some other great pieces on this structure that include, um, so there's something called a Critter Canyon that has, it's very tactile, it's very visual. It's butterflies and caterpillars that sort of pop out at you and you can run your hands across it. Where it's a great piece for kids two to five again who are more tactile than by the time you're seven, you are running and you are climbing, but you're you know, not really as curious as you were maybe three or four years ago. Um, there's a couple play panels on here that include a rain sound panel. So if you've ever seen a rain stick, uh, it's, just, it's a panel that makes that same sound and uh, it's great for auditory, right? So having as many play experiences as possible, even, um, so really hitting all the senses. So auditory is there. And then we have an optic gear panel, which is a really good visual piece. Um, and there's a little belt bridge. It's a cute, it's a cute design. So this is the uh, this is the overall master plan uh, concept that uh, that was presented to the selectmen in 2017 and, and accepted by them. Um, the uh, the beige area on the left is the area that the uh, the playground uh, will um, will sit in. Thank you. Um, uh, the master plan you can see the the um, the, the parking lot. Um, thank you. The uh, upper and lower parking lots. Currently, the existing brick pathway leads from the lower parking lot into the playground, and that's going to be maintained. Uh, so what we're, we're fundraising for with the uh, Buy a Brick campaign is to create a new pathway um, from the upper parking lot um, um, and then connecting into the main pathway, I'm sorry, the, uh, connecting to the, the main entrance for the playground. Um, and the way that the, uh, the, the current design looks, uh, it looks like maybe the main entrance is going to be where that um, little uh, covered bridge kiosk is. And that's um, something that uh, we're working with a volunteer, that'll be a volunteer-led um, built structure um, the, the, to sort of echo back to the, um, the original um, um, covered bridge entryway that, that everybody sort of recognizes as Friendship Park's um, entryway. Um, a couple of other things to, to highlight here in the master plan are that um, the, the current configuration of the baseball and soccer fields is going to actually get flipped. So the, the, the uh, soccer lacrosse field is going to go into the front of the park and the um, uh, baseball uh, fields are going to be moved into the back. And the thinking there was that in, in making that change, moving the backstops to the rear of the park, it would open up the sight lines of the park. So if you're, if you're um, sitting, in, or, you know, sitting or playing in Friendship Park, you'll now be able to look across the park and see into the pond, whereas um, um, into that area. So whereas uh, currently you see basically backstops and fences. Um, the the um, designs of the baseball fields um, are basically dugouts and um, backstops. There's no outfield fences. Um, the lacrosse field will have uh, safety netting on the left and right hand sides of the uh, lacrosse fields, um, similar to what's at um, McCarthy. There will also be an interior walking track that will be added that will loop around here. And like I said, that, kind of, that, that is sort of echoed in the design of the, uh, the playground design that, that we're showing you tonight. And then along this, um, along this walking trail, there will be um, new exercise stations set up. There's currently um, five, I think, or six there now. Um, we'll be adding to those um, if fundraising works out. And um, making that, uh, adding some more um, senior friendly types of uh, uh, exercise equipment. We also have, um, we, we spent a lot of time as a committee uh, talking about bathrooms and the need for bathrooms. And where we netted out was that 
Um, we, uh, we have allocated a, a shade structure that will be located here, close to the playground. Currently, the, there's, a, there's a, a porta potty placed here. There'll be a shade structure here with uh, two porta potties in place. Uh, one um, uh, handicap size accessible, and then um, a, a regular size one there as well. So it'll be the, the bathrooms will be much closer, and then with the shade structure, there'll also be a, a seat uh, in place so that uh, you can change diapers and stuff like that. Um, but we we're, we do not have a uh, permanent structure bathroom uh, on the plan. It's going to be a shade structure with. Uh, And this is the timeline if you wanted to speak I can speak to the to the timeline just briefly. I mean tonight well, obviously the other stuff that's grayed out has already happened. So tonight we're here at the at the public input. Um, you know, we'll we'll fine tune this, you know, any changes that need to be made over the course of the next week. And we're looking to get um, final approval from the town manager next week and go ahead and get the equipment ordered. That way, you know, because we're kind of on a tight, at the, end of the, at the end of the day, we want to have this open for the end of school, kind of with a little bit of a factor of safety, 4th of July is the fallback, but I think it's certainly possible if we can go ahead and get the equipment ordered here in the next week or so that, you know, by the time school's out, this, the playground will be open and functional. That, that is the DPW's goal. And it has been since we um, demolished the wooden structure that was there back in early December. Um, but, you know, just some, some of the highlights on the, on the timeline here is, you know, the, get, get the equipment ordered, get it in, hopefully the end of April after we have done uh, the initial site prep, you know, get Megan's contractors to start uh, working with us to erect some of the structural pieces. Uh, I believe it's the target for the first week of June, that's the second and third for kind of the community build weekend which, you know, you get volunteers to come in and help kind of assemble panels or, you know, the simple stuff, not the big heavy structural stuff that has to get uh, assembled, but some of the simple, the decking, you know, hanging a swing, that type of thing. Uh, and then having that happen in the beginning of June allows us a couple of week lead time and Megan's contractors, her contractors coming through the board in place allows us a couple of weeks to come in, get the interior walkways done and all that, get the uh, permit fencing done. That way, when we get to that kind of cutting the ribbon day, everything's done. So just really quickly, I mentioned earlier, I wanted to give you a quick update about the, uh, the fundraising and volunteer efforts that, the, uh, that we're, we're undertaking. Um, I mentioned that the, uh, the Friends of Roberts Field is going to be the sort of the fundraising arm of, the, um, of this, this, this playground project and other projects moving forward with the, the master plan. Um, we are. We have a set of fundraising goal of uh, over. It's one hundred thousand, one hundred and five thousand um, dollars, and it's made up of three different, different components: one, the buy a brick campaign, corporate sponsorships, and then also uh, grants. Um, and I would encourage you. We definitely need help. <laughs> we uh, we're going to need help um, on the community build just from, for uh, people to show up. We need at least fifty people per day, uh, or about fifty people per day on June second and third. Um, and um, we're going to need help um, with our corporate fundraising as well. Um, so uh, the, the types of activities that we're looking for people to help us with are making phone calls, posting flyers, sort of getting the word out, sending emails, grant writing, and more. So if you guys have an interest, if anyone has an interest in that, we would definitely um, like to talk to you about that. Um, I wanted to point out that um, um, the community build, we also have, uh, we were expecting that that's, that's actually going to be lowering. We're, 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 by, by doing the community build, we're actually giving the town a savings of about forty thousand dollars. So there's a, there's a definite value there. So uh, your time and energy and effort will definitely go to a, a good use. Um, and anything that any questions you have, or if you want any kind of information about the fundraising or the volunteer efforts, I encourage you to visit uh, our website, friendsofrobertsfield.org. So this is the time to ask lots of questions. Um, I hope you uh, hope you're happy with the uh, with the um, the plan. But we'd love to hear your input and uh, hear what you uh, what you have to say. So if uh, if anyone has any questions, if you'll come up to the microphone and let us know. If you're not comfortable doing that, we also have put out comment flyers on the tables. 
Um, if you'll fill out uh, one of those, um, we'll be happy to, uh, to uh, answer those questions as well. Um, but we'll also would appreciate just your, your general feedback on the, uh, the plans and the things that we discussed tonight. Any questions? Wow. We did our homework. <laughs> would you mind coming to the microphone? Thank you. Um, so we're, we're just right up the street from, from the park, and we've visited it several times. I noticed that there was oriental bittersweet on the exterior side of the park. Is that land offered by the town, or is that someone else's? And I ask because I know that it's very time consuming and costly to keep that away. Uh, so yeah, I, I mean, wonder the upkeep, what that's going to mean. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I can touch on it, Bill can probably get into a little more in depth too. But um, I think that the bit of suite is on all properties down there. It's on the town of property, it's on abutting properties. Um, I know the, the friends of Roberts Field through the uh, MOU with the town has some uh, removal plans. Granted, it's a pretty heavy task removing bittersweet um, totally. If you can ever really kill it, uh, um, but at least this it's acknowledged and there's a a plan going forward to at least try to. Curtail it. I don't even know if that's the right word to say, but you know, we, we know it's there anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a great question, and we um, we um, spent a lot of time in the master plan process talking about it. Um, where we met it out, um, well, we, we talked a lot. Of, I mean, um, really, the only way to um, defeat bittersweet is chemically, um, and we talked a lot about the effects of the chemical treatments. On the, the park and the habitat, because I don't I don't know if you know or not, but the, the natural areas of the park have now been designated as the wildlife sanctuary at Roberts Field. So, um, maintaining a healthy habitat for um, the animals and the people that are there in the park is really an important part of the, the master plan and an important part of the, the Friends of Roberts Field and all of our all of our efforts moving forward. So, one of the reasons why one of the reasons why we actually ended up with the size of the um, footprint, the maximum size of the footprint of the playground was because um, that outer area was so overrun with bittersweet. And enlarging that area would allow us to um, um, get machinery in there to keep it continually mowed and keep the maintenance going on. Because what happened with the, um, I think I'll say, what happened with the last playground is, is that um, the fence was sort of there and then the bittersweet sort of took over and then it, it just couldn't get to it. So part of the maintenance plan for this is that we've actually expanded into that area, so there'll be some of uh, some maintenance, obviously mowing and stuff, because the, the, the playground will require mowing, so that'll that'll take care of it. And that consistency, that consistent mowing, will take the bitters out eventually. On the other side of the fence, um, we're going to have um, an abutter um, uh, planting to help cut cut down on some of the noise and visual impact from the new playground. So. The goal there is to have that maintenance area open as well. So at least on the upper edge of the um, playground, I think we have it more open and we have a plan in place to, to try to address it. Um, as far as the other parts of the playground, it's really a, um, it's a, it's a battle. We, um, we have um, the Friends of Roberts Field hosts us like a, at least one, if not two, um, bittersweet um, work parties to try and get a lot of that stuff out of there because what happens is is that the bittersweet you know grows and then it grows up into the canopies of the trees and then it just decimates the trees so um, and then that's happened mainly in the back in between um, the area close to the Lupians um, um, part so there's there's plans in place we're going to continue to, to to try to to get a crack at it and try to do it um, we are going to try to part of the master plan recommendations were that the town would use chemicals to try to uh, attack the, uh, um, the hardest hit places and then use heavy machinery to pull some of the stuff out and clear some of that stuff out. And then once that's out, it's going to take um, just five to ten years of maintenance just to kind of keep that stuff in check. Um, it, it's, that's the donation goats to the problem. Yeah, even the goats yeah, represent a, a, a problem too. It's, a, it's such a big area, it's hard to kind of pin off. Because uh, we did look at that as well. 
it's in the plan, it's been discussed, and it's just going to be something we're going to have to continue to fight for. Well, I hope that answers your question. D. B. Miller, 17, Patty Drone, North Chelsea. Uh, will there be a drinking fountain? Uh, there will not be a drinking fountain, and uh, the reason there won't be, we talked to the we talked to the water department about adding um, a bubbler, um, and they um, didn't feel like they felt like adding a bubbler would actually add a health risk because the the line from the street to the bubbler would be so long, and the volume of water taken from the bubbler would mean that the water would sit in the lines for too long and create a bacteria problem. So. Um, we all agreed that you know we'd love to have water because that's a that's an important thing. But the water department said, you know what, it's going to create a bacteria hazard, and it's just not it's not a workable solution. So our hope is that uh, I'll call it Rosie's store, the town and country store, that's been um, unsold for a couple of years now, will get sold once the once the, um, the playground starts to kind of take shape, and uh, there'll be lots of water available there for uh, for people to purchase. And then recycling bins for water bottles, right? Uh, garbage cans for sure, and... Um, Re recycling I, bins for plastic water bottles. Yes. I think we were just committed to recycling bins. <laughs> we're uh, Richard and Samuel Friesen. We live at 12 Lovett Lane. First, we want to wear pajamas every day, so we like the, the theme for tonight. And we want to thank you for all of your work on this. We're really excited about the sand pit and that it's in the middle. That's important to us. And we are excited as a family to take part in building it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Um, Peach Alec. Uh, we live right across the street from the park. Um, and I know that there's all kinds of other things that are coming down the line for um, the, the park as a whole. So the first thing is the playground. Is there a prioritized list of, of all the other things that are going to be happening? So as far as like rebuilding the fields and things like that, is that what you I guess what I'm, I'm most um, concerned about is security, because there's, you know, with the playground, living across the street, yep. you know, there were many nights where I'd be out and I would just hear the sure. vandalism happening across the street, and, you know, not much to do about it. This is a, a beautiful design you guys have, and, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of uh, concerning about, you know, stuff. Yep. Like as far as security, I can speak to that a little bit. There is a plan in place. Um, a spring town meeting uh, to add security cameras uh, at this this is one of the locations um, assuming that funding's approved I'll work with our IT uh, and the police to get the locations I know that we have there's been some talks with the police already but I think there'll be you know obviously some cameras covering the majority of the playground and then possibly one over by the parks garage you know just and then probably something that'll at least give you some kind of sight line into the upper parking lot. I mean, I'm, I don't want to say that's exactly what's going to happen, but the playground will probably certainly have coverage. Uh, and then over beyond the skate shack, but I would think that up a lot. But I, I know what you, what you mean, that after the honest nature of the beast. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, you're saying that, is it um, not an option for the town to purchase Rosie's and use that as like a snack? Because I thought a snack shack thing was like a... Well, I, I think anything's possible. Uh, you know, if I hit the lottery on the way home, I'll buy it. <laughs> you know, be, uh, but at this point, it, I don't think I don't think the town wants to get into you know owning the store. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Hello. Um, so I'm on uh, Mansfield Drive. Brand new to the town. Uh, as of the beginning of the school year, stumbled upon the, I guess, the, the old one, um, once with my kids before school started, and that was a great location, but yeah, I'm glad to see you guys <laughs> have this. So I just wanted to say, um, I love new playgrounds, so this is awesome, but um, monkey bars, monkey bars are a good thing for kids, and so I don't, didn't hear you mention monkey bars, 
Um, and there will obviously be plenty of room for more people. Um, and then uh, your water, the rain, your, your rain tube you were mentioning. Um, I was going to ask, before you mentioned that, I thought of the music elements, like even the drumming. You know, the kids always love the drumming elements, so if you had a few more musical elements along with your rain stick, then I think it would be awesome. But otherwise, um, yeah, we're here now. I got four kids, so um, I put my name on the list. And especially if we're able to help for the groundbreaking, we'd love to do that. I always wanted to do that. So. <laughs> Thank you. So I can speak to the monkey bars. Um, if you look at the component list, you're right. I didn't. It wasn't one of my pictures, but we definitely have something called a lolly ladder. So if you look at the component list. Um, it is on the second page. It is the second item down. So um, we have a monkey bar. Um, and then we have a lot of those rope climbing that I should talked about, which was the Netflix and the swiggle sticks that will definitely help to build upper body strength. There's a ton of climbers on here, but for suspended, there is something called a lolly ladder that is on there for the five to 12 year olds. Um, we really concentrate on monkey bars for ages five and up because it's very difficult for um, anyone four and younger to do a monkey bar. Um, and then uh, oh, the music, do you guys want to talk about? I mean, there was the rain sound, the auditory. It didn't put, not, I mean, we, we talked about the, the something two, being loud the and neighbor. <laughs> so there's still the white tube. I don't know what you call it. The air, I don't know. I call it an air drummer. It's like the Blue Man Group PVC type thing that's still there. Um, I I don't know. I like. I could be the part of the Yeah. They have a Like the wooden xylophones. Is that kind of what you're thinking? Yeah. Of? We don't have a wooden xylophone type thing in this design, but we could certainly um, look at, they have all sorts of really interesting panels, like we chose the rain one specifically trying to get music, we could look at some of the other ones and you know, see if there's something else to kind of mimic that. Um, absolutely. One other thing that I wanted to point out that's not on the plan too is uh, we, we we talked a lot since the beginning of the, of the process about um, trying to trying to maximize the the nature theme of the, the playground to tie into the rest of the park. Um, and one of the things that we're we're doing is in the um, central area. I don't want to blind you, heck, I'm sorry. <laughs> trying to go around you. Um, in this area here, uh, Western Nurseries has actually um, offered to. Donate a design for um, a, a natural play area that would include um, a bunch of different elements, um, things like a sensory garden, things that where plants can get touched and pulled and tugged. Uh, maybe a small butterfly garden. Uh, we could also we've also looked at putting in some sort of a, um, animal track kind of sensory. Um, I don't want to call it panels, but it might be it might even be just just be concrete impressions from different animals that would that you typically find in um, um, in the area. Um, Maybe a little smaller, uh, a little uh, pathway just to kind of get get, kid, get kids into the area. But that's that's something that's going to kind of take up some of that space and um, sort of echo that that nature thing that we've uh, we've been talking about. Um, I came in late, so if you address this, my apologies. Uh, you indicated one hundred five thousand dollars for funding. You're looking for uh, contributions. Um, one. Ha have you begun the, like the campaign to um, obtain these contributions from the community? And if so, where is that at? If not, is there is there a campaign to sort of get out there and obtain the contribution aside from the, the bricks? And just a little bit more around that funding piece. And does that impact the opening of the playground or and things along those lines? So we started the design process for the campaigning, and so we have it scoped out. So from a corporate perspective, we have the ability to offer uh, options for companies to sponsor at a platinum level, gold level, silver, and bronze as different increments. 
Uh, companies can also purchase the equipment and sponsorship that way. Uh, they can also purchase the bricks, just like anybody else. Uh, we're kicking this program off, actually, what, next week? Yeah. Uh, we've, we've held off on actually um, going out and doing corporate fundraising yet because we, we wanted to have the final um, equipment list in hand so that we could go to a company and say, you know, hey, you have this opportunity to purchase this zip groups. Um, and this is how much it would be. So, so that's going to happen on March 5th. We'll have that list and then we can move up from there. So another big part of this too with the corporate sponsorships is there's a lot of great companies in the area. And if you work at some of these great companies or know someone that does, we really need champions to go in there and talk about this, promote it, you know, speak to your philanthropists in the organizations. And if you're not comfortable having those negotiations or talking about the donations, if you want to give us the information of that person, we're happy to have that conversation, but it'd be all very nice to have that lead in. And you can go to friendsofrobertsfield.org and uh, provide that information there. Uh, so, if you want to mention anything about the 501c3? Yeah, uh, part of the part of the uh, um, this process um, got a little bit delayed because um, the the existing Friends of Robertsfield Friends of Robertsfield started as basically a volunteer organization that would kind of get people together to go out and. Uh, you know, we established Pollinator Park on the corner of uh, Old West and Western Streets. So we, were, we were pretty much just a sweat equity kind of a volunteer group, and we didn't have a, um, a true 501c3 status. So we've spent the last, uh, gosh, eight weeks. I don't know if anybody's ever gone through the process of filing a 1023 form with the IRS, but let me tell you, it's not exactly fun. Um, we spent a, a good amount of time getting that 501c3 um, application into the government. We have it there now, and so we're in line for it. Um, and our, our plan is to um, start fundraising, start the corporate fundraising um, after March 5th. We've been spending um, some time leading up to that, creating our database and getting a, a list of names together. Um, our goal is to send out um, communications to this defined, prioritized list, and then try to find folks in town, including the selectmen and people, uh, uh, you know, other people in town that would make calls for us to either try to close and to, to get a, a, a check donation or to purchase a piece of equipment um, or to set a meeting for us to get one sit down with them to do that. Um, we, are, we are in a very good situation because Fall Town Meeting um, did approve up to $450,000 for um, the cost of the playground and our, our intent is um, to um, pay down some of that money. So the monies that we go out and we, we raise for, we're giving back to the town with the intent that that, uh, that draw from the CPC funds would be um, given back to CPC. Um, it's, it's, uh, we're, we're in the process of putting together contracts that we'll use for that to make sure that everybody's on the same page, but um, ultimately it's up to the town what they, what they do with the money, but that's at least our intent. I'd like to say one thing. We are accepting donations now. We just can't say that they're 501c3 accepted. So anyone who wants to give us donations now, that would be great, but uh, we can't make it tax deductible until that 501c3 goes forward. And that's why we haven't pushed the fundraising at this point. Our expectations are with the, with the application now in the IRS's hand that um, it shouldn't take more than 90 days, but it's the government, so you just never really know. So, but we're, we're trying. We're, we're pushing ahead, pushing forward, and um, we're going to do the best we can. If you donate now, as long as we get the we get this awarded, then you can still file the tax return. Yes, and um, our our um, our nonprofit date will be effective as the postmark, which was Saturday. So um, uh, we're we're just waiting for the approvals. Oh, to answer your question about the park opening, none of this affects the date of the park opening. Hi. Sorry for the long walk. It just it helps. <laughs> I'm Sandy. I'm Sandy Rainey. Are you Bill? Yes. Nice, nice to meet you. I'm, I run the Facebook page, Chelmsford Mass Rocks. We've got over 900 members there, and we are very interested in putting a friendship rock garden in the park. I have a picture of one um, I can leave with you, or I've seen some that are made just from whiskey barrels. Um, with my group paints up stones. It's part of the Kindness Rocks project. I'm sure you've heard. Maybe some of you found stones. Um, it's just, it's a thing that just makes you happy, whether a kid finds it or an adult finds it. My question is, any place for picnic tables in, there'll be a great place to paint rocks, you know, for, for the kids. Yeah, 
our, our, we've, we've talked about this in the last couple of meetings, um, and the plan is that um, the Chelsea Bass Rocks would be part of the nature play area um, um, that Weston's working on the design for. And in that nature play area, we talked about a signage plan last week. Um, we'd have one, one sort of lower, sort of a low profile signage that would sort of detail the different things that are going on in that nature play area. So it would be the sensory garden, the butterfly garden, and you know, the tracks. And right. then Chumps and Mass Rocks would be one of those things that would be identified there. Mm -hmm. So um, I think you had, you had said that the, 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 the bin, I guess, that holds the painted rocks would be um, right. about a three by three area. So Yes, um, something like that, or even a large whiskey barrel, just to have the rocks in there. And we could be replenished all the time, where people can either leave a rock there or take a rock somewhere. What I'd like to do is encourage you to come to our next meeting and, and send me that and we'll make sure that we have that as a discussion item because we'll, at that meeting I expect we'll have uh, more detail from Weston about sort of what they, their design for the okay. nature play area. Um, and we can talk about, um, talk about how that, that would be incorporated. Great. Just off the top of my head, you know, I think our concerns would probably be um, the long-term maintenance of, the, of the, uh, mm -hmm. the container and then also making sure that's safe um, for kids. Sure. Um, as far as the painting and stuff goes, I don't, I don't, that would be a question we'd have to have for uh, facilities um, and the types of things that they would have. We could certainly reach out to them and ask them. So. Is this going to be entirely fenced? It will be. Yeah, there'll be a perimeter fence around, around it, and the current plan has three entries. Well, there okay. actually will be a, a fourth entry in the back that'll be a double swing. There'll be a, a swing gate for maintenance equipment to get in the back, but there'll be three kind of pedestrian openings. You know, that, that basically what you see on the plan. No, no locks anywhere to keep people out at night. No what? No any locks to keep people out at night. No, no gates. No, because mm -hmm. they, they'll just be okay. left open. Who's gonna lock them? Type okay. of thing. Good. All right. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Great questions. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, my name is Dennis Guerin. I live in Horseshoe Road, and uh, this is a great project, by the way. We enjoy the park, my wife and I, my grandchildren, and uh, and I might have missed this, but I'm not sure. But am I safe to assume that the blue areas are the rubber areas? Yes. That includes the walkway. No. Okay, because that's what it says here. Um, but the brown areas are what? What are those, what's the ground color? With, in the brown? Yeah. That's the engineered wood fiber. That's wood chips, basically. Wood, like what's there now? Yeah. Yeah, okay, in the, in the grass, okay. And then the, the, uh, the pathways, we have, we, uh, Steve is working on the budget and the cost for that, um, but they'll, they will either be um, crushed, the, the interior pathway in the playground will either be a, a concrete walkway or like a crusher fine uh, material. It, it depends on how I can make the money work. <laughs> or, or maybe the, uh, the, the engraved brick. The yeah, or there could be some of the brick on the inside. Too. Some of the bricks, some of the engraved bricks. No pressure. Are you good? I thought I was done, but my mother in law texted and she's insisted on finding out if there's any progress on the dedicating the bench. That will be something that's possible. We're just getting, when the equipment list is kind of finalized with the prices, then we'll be able to respond to people and say a bench sponsorship costs X and have a little plaque. She just wants to make sure she doesn't <laughs> Absolutely, it's on our radar. We've had a couple inquiries about wanting to sponsor a bench. For kids like scooter and stuff on the pathway, how big? I mean, like I said, to me it looks big, but I'm spatially <laughs> challenged. Um, if, you, if you want to sort of get a gauge as to um, the space that we're looking at, um, like I said, that's 66 feet. Right. Yeah. So, so it's so, big. Yeah. So you think kids could certainly sort of scooter and stuff around without knocking over people? Oh, the width. Will 
it'll be four or five feet. I'm assuming I'll do a five foot walkway through there. Uh, it might have to be ADA compliance for yeah. wheelchair access, so it should be fine. And then there also will be the interior on the master plan. There will also be the interior pathway as well. So um, um, there'll be that pathway to use as well. Any other questions? It won't be your last chance. I say if, if, uh, if you have any questions, um, feel free to uh, email us at uh, info at robertsfield.org or info at friendsofrobertsfield.org or bricks at friendsofrobertsfield.org. Just take your pick. we got a bunch of them. Um, and please let us know what you think about um, what you think about the plans. If you have any questions that you're not comfortable asking, please um, write those down. And we'll just leave them on the back table as you, as you leave. Um, and again, um, I encourage you to please sign up and, uh, for our email list um, and we'll gladly uh, uh, get in touch with you about uh, next steps, volunteer opportunities. So, thank you very much for coming out tonight. We really appreciate all of the, all of the questions and all of your attention. And um, we hope to... Oh, and we'll be here for a little bit too. If you guys have any questions, you want to just ask us one-on-one. -on -one. And again, um, there's plans and stuff that you can go through. There's plenty of books and things back there that you can grab a copy of. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.